Hi, my name is Dr. Bob Basu. I'm a board certified aesthetic plastic surgeon in Houston, Texas. I'm the founder and medical director of Basu Aesthetics and Plastic Surgery. My practice primarily focuses on aesthetic surgery of the face, breast, and body. When searching for, your, uh, for the right plastic surgeon for you, I think you need to do your homework. First, you need to make sure that your plastic surgeon is certi board certified by the American Board of Plastic Surgery accept no imitations and make sure they're a member of the American Society of Plastic Surgeons. Number two, you want to review their before after photo galleries of their own work and you want to review that they do a lot of the procedure that you're interested in. Number three, you need to make sure that you're having your surgery done in a fully accredited or state licensed ambulatory surgery center. And four, meet with the surgeon and their team well in advance to make sure you feel comfortable with the surgeon and their team and last but not least, ask who's doing your anesthesia. I take pride that I only work with a board certified MD anesthesiologist for all my cases. So the top things that I like to cover with my patients is number one, what are the patient's goals? I encourage you to bring photos of results that you'd like to emulate. I call these wish picks. Now, wish picks are a great way for you to communicate to me where you're trying to go my job is to evaluate you and see if we can get you there or if we need to do some other procedures to get you there or if there's some anatomic challenges that we may actually not be able to get you there. Number two, we're gonna discuss the procedure in great detail. We're gonna talk about the incision, the approach, placement. We're gonna talk about implant types, the different implant types that are available for you. We discuss the short-term and potential long-term risks that are, are associated with any medical device, including scar tissue formation or implant rupture. It's important you sit down with me and review safety of the implant so you feel comfortable with your choices. Number three, we're gonna talk about recovery. And four, we're gonna talk about implant sizing. How do we pick the right size to achieve your goals? So the most common question I get from patients is how do I pick the right size to achieve my goals? First, during your consultation, I'm gonna take detailed measurements of your chest wall. And based on all these numbers, I'm gonna know a range of implants that will fit proportionally to your frame and unique body type. Second, we have a sizing process. During your sizing visit, you're gonna wear a special sports bra. You're gonna try different implants and place them in that sizing sports bra. Then we're gonna have you wear a form-fitting t-shirt over that. Or if there's an outfit that you'd like to wear after your procedure, we encourage you to bring it. And in front of a large mirror, you get to pick one or two implant sizes that are actually achieving the look that you're shooting for. Natrel breast implants important safety information and approved uses. Breast implants are not considered lifetime devices. The longer people have them, the greater the chances are that they will develop complications, some of which will require more surgery. Breast implants have been associated with the development of a cancer of the immune system called breast implant associated anaplastic large cell lymphoma, BIAALCL. This cancer occurs more commonly in patients with textured breast implants than smooth implants, although rates are not well defined. Some patients have died from BIAALCL. Patients receiving breast implants have reported a variety of systemic symptoms such as joint pain, muscle aches, confusion, chronic fatigue, autoimmune diseases, and others. Individual patient risk for developing these symptoms has not been well established. Some patients report complete resolution of symptoms when the implants are removed without replacement. Who can get breast implants? Natrel breast implants are approved for the following. Breast augmentation for women at least 22 years old for silicone-filled implants and for women at least 18 years old for saline-filled implants. Breast augmentation includes primary breast augmentation to increase the breast size and revision surgery to correct or improve the result of a primary breast augmentation. Breast reconstruction. This includes primary breast reconstruction to replace breast tissue that has been removed due to cancer or trauma or that has failed to develop properly due to a severe breast abnormality. This also includes revision surgery to correct or improve the result of a primary breast reconstruction. Who should not get breast implants? Breast implant surgery should not be performed in women with active infection anywhere in their body, women with existing cancer or precancer of their breast who have not received adequate treatment for those conditions, women who are currently pregnant or nursing. What should I tell my doctor? Tell your doctor if you have any of the following conditions as the risks of breast implant surgery may be higher. Autoimmune diseases, example, 
lupus and scleroderma, a weakened immune system, example, taking medications to decrease the body's immune response, planned chemotherapy or radiation therapy following breast implant placement, conditions or medications that interfere with wound healing and blood clotting, reduced blood supply to breast tissue, clinical diagnosis of depression or other mental health disorders, including body dysmorphic disorder and eating disorders. Those with diagnosis of depression or other mental health disorders should wait for resolution or stabilization of these conditions prior to undergoing breast implantation surgery. What else should I consider? There is a boxed warning for breast implants. Please see bold text at beginning. Many changes to your breasts following implantation are irreversible. If you later choose to have your implants removed and not replaced, you may experience dimpling, puckering, wrinkling, or other cosmetic changes, which may be permanent. Breast implantation is likely not a one-time surgery. The longer implants are in place, the greater the potential risk for complications. You will likely need additional surgeries on your breasts due to complications or unacceptable cosmetic results. Thus, you should also consider the complication rates for later revision surgery, since you may experience these risks in the future. Cancer treatments and surgery will affect the outcome and timing of breast reconstruction. Breast implants may affect your ability to breastfeed, either by reducing or eliminating milk production. Rupture of a silicone filled breast implant is most often silent. Even if you have no symptoms, you should have your first ultrasound or MRI at five to six years after your initial implant surgery, and then every two to three years thereafter, regardless of whether your implants are for augmentation or reconstruction. If you have symptoms of or uncertain ultrasound results for breast implant rupture, an MRI is recommended. Additional imaging may be required depending on your medical history and status. The health consequences of a ruptured silicone gel-filled breast implant have not been fully established. Routine screening mammography for breast cancer will be more difficult, and implants may rupture during the procedure. Perform self-examination every month for cancer screening and ask your surgeon to help you distinguish the implant from your breast tissue. Lumps, persistent pain, swelling, hardening, or changes in implant shape should be reported to your surgeon and possibly evaluated with imaging. What are key complications with breast implants? Key complications include reoperation, implant removal with or without replacement, implant rupture with silicone-filled implants, implant deflation with saline-filled implants, and capsular contracture, severe scar tissue around the implant. Other complications include include breast pain, swelling, asymmetry, wrinkling, rippling, implant malposition, nipple complications, hypertrophic scarring, and implant palpability visibility. Talk to your doctor about other complications. For more information, see the patient brochures at www.allergan.com products. To report a problem with Natrel breast implants, please call Allergan at 1-800-624-4261. The sale and distribution of Natrel breast implants is restricted to licensed physicians who provide information to patients about the risks and benefits of breast implant surgery.